It's my pleasure to be here with you today, and uh, it's have been uh, uh, many years of cooperation in between the All India Ophthalmology Society and uh, Russian Ophthalmology Society, and I'm glad to continue uh, that in this COVID era, and I hope we will continue uh, uh, later on as well uh, in the offline format. So I will be talking about anterior vitreous detachment and cataract surgery. And uh, I don't have any relevant disclosures uh, uh, related to that particular subject. So I was interested in, in the clinical findings that we may occasionally all see uh, at the end of the, or during the cataract procedure, when the particles are located uh, somewhere behind the posterior capsule, uh, floating there and uh, uh, obviously showing that the fragments uh, of the lens that are created during emulsification uh, uh, somehow goes uh, from the anterior chamber behind the lens and accumulates there uh, and stays there. So, and that is uh, the phenomena that was uh, uh, really described a long, long time ago uh, by uh, uh, Dick McCool, who wrote this uh, nice uh, uh, letter to the editor back in 1993. And also he was citing his uh, personal book on cataract surgery and fake emulsification uh, dated 1999, when, where he described this uh, infusion misdirection syndrome and uh, when the um, uh, fluid accumulates behind the posterior capsule and there is a, a posterior capsule bul bulging forward. Uh, as shown here, this is intraoperative OCT and we have a chance to see these uh, nice images today from the other surgeon. And it's, uh, here we see the posterior surface of the IOL, uh, the posterior capsule and uh, Berger space, uh, uh, which is uh, the, um, uh, space in between the posterior capsule and anterior <coughs> hyaloid. So and shown here, uh, this is how we see it uh, uh, during uh, cataract surgery. And uh, in our clinical observation, we've seen different variations of uh, an how anterior hyaloid it looks like. And this is the capsule, and this is the anterior hyaloid. And we see that um, it is not very even, and uh, the there is a d destruction of anterior hyaloid, which is usually... Uh, common in uh, patients with advanced cataract and periodic exfoliation syndromes. And occasionally we see the, uh, this image of the split uh, anterior hyaloid. This is posterior capsule bulging forward uh, during irrigation aspiration. And this is the anterior hyaloid, which is split into uh, two pieces. So here, um, how the uh, bulging happens, uh, irrigation fluid goes um, through the zonules and uh, pushes the, uh, the capsule uh, into the direction of the, uh, uh, of the um, anterior chamber. And this is how you can see here. And even by compressing on the posterior capsule, you see that the, this fluid is quite strong and uh, uh, representing that uh, the, uh, the uh, pressure behind the posterior capsule is slightly higher than the pressure in the anterior chamber, probably because of the outflow uh, of the fluid through the main and side port incision. So this is uh, uh, also representing uh, that the balance uh, uh, of pressures in between the anterior and posterior chamber is not, uh, is not perfect. So this is again what happens uh, uh, when the uh, FECO handpiece is in place and uh, uh, the surgeon is pushing on the on the capsule, uh, showing uh, that the pressure is quite uh, strong and lifting the capsule. The, this this is uh, again happened during uh, not only fake emulsification phase but also during irrigation aspiration phase, and sometimes this uh, bulging is quite prominent and significant, and we have to be aware of that uh, in order to avoid um, aspirating uh, that capsule. And again, you see here, this is a double image of the anterior hyaloid, which is split into, into two pieces. And uh, 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 that is the case. So here's the uh, uh, mechanism of the uh, posterior capsule rupture in these cases when uh, there is a, 
um, uh, irrigation aspiration uh, utilizing bimanual end pieces and it's shown here uh, the capsule is aspirated uh, and uh, obviously damaged so this is uh, the case when uh, irrigation uh, aspiration uh, phase of, of that procedure and usually it happens when you uh, when you try to polish the capsule like in in that particular case and uh, uh, the radial folds showing you uh, nicely uh, what happens uh, during that uh, phase of the procedure and uh, occasionally depending on the instrumentation that you use uh, with uh, coaxial handpiece it's more frequent than in um, uh, bimanual end pieces and we all know that at that particular moment we need to keep the anterior chamber uh, filled and it was already discussed uh, in in the previous talk that uh, this is the rolled edge and this is the straight ray edge of the bacteria capsule rupture and you see how hyaloid uh, is bulging forward through that uh, uh, through that capsule uh, However, hyaluronic face is intact, and we are being able to uh, press it down uh, with a, a cohesive viscoelastic in order to convert the, uh, this uh, opening into the very nice posterior capsulexis. And uh, uh, in that case, I will is implanted into the capsular bag without uh, loss of the vitreous. And here uh, we can see uh, of the inflation of the anterior chamber. The hyaloid uh, is uh, positioned quite far away from the capsule. We even cannot see the bacteria capsule, but rather the hyaloid, which is located um, uh, 1.5 to 2 millimeters uh, backwards. So here's the uh, um, images that we, we do have. Uh, this is the patient after radial keratotomy, which you can see by these scars. And uh, uh, we know that in, in these cases, the zonules are uh, usually weaker. So IOL is in the bag, bacteria capsule with some cortical remnants on, on, on that capsule and anterior uh, vitreous hyaloid, which is detached. And we, we see that there, there is an adhesion seal in, in the uh, mid periphery of that uh, bacteria capsule, which, uh, which uh, holds the, uh, the, uh, the uh, contact in between the bacteria capsule and the anterior hyaloid. And we published that uh, observation uh, at GSRS uh, uh, quite recently. So, um, first of all, we, we want to, to uh, conclude that uh, uh, intraoperative uh, uh, infusion misdirection syndrome uh, when the condition is the condition when irrigation fluid accumulate behind the bacteria capsule and uh, uh, in between the bacteria capsule and the hyaluronic membrane. And the major predisposing factors are loose zonules and uh, lysis of vigorous ligament, which is uh, attaching the anterior hyaloid to posterior surface of the capsule. And th there are some several clinical signs to keep in mind. Uh, and first of all, bulging of posterior capsule at the final steps of nucleus removal and during irrigation aspiration, making it very susceptible to damage and we do think that it's a very significant risk factor for PC rupture, not only for the younger surgeons, but also for experienced ones. And we thank you very much for your kind attention.